Guardians of the Rift, probably my favorite skilling minigame like of all time, honestly. And it focuses on a skill that many thought would never have a minigame for. That is runecrafting. This skill is the definition of slow, and it's also very dry. I agree with most people that runecrafting is a pain, probably the worst one. Until at least 77 where you can at least AFK at Zaya at the blood runes or something. But the mini game is actually super engaging and fairly easy to play, so anybody can get on board with this. It gets really good XP, over 60k an hour based on your effort and setup. Of course, if you're lower level, it won't be that, but it's still pretty good. Finally, a minigame that will certainly motivate people to train runecrafting. Now, for my main Iron Man, Mr. Iron Bar, this minigame is a true godsend because of the rewards. This minigame provides the runecrafting skilling set, which gives 60% more runes when all four pieces are worn at any runecrafting activity. You can also get the Abyssal Needle to make the massive pouch, which lets you carry more essence effectively increasing your runes crafted per hour and XP. So this mini game is crazy good for me as well even though I'm already maxed. Because it solves one of the biggest problems I've ever had playing on an endgame Iron Man, which is sustaining blood runes. For example, the Nightmare boss grind took me well over 500,000 blood runes, probably nearing a million at this point. And I used blood runes all the time elsewhere too. I was barely able to keep up with it previously, AFKing many hours at the blood altar in Zaya and also buying blood runes as well. Buying blood runes is also a huge pain because you often compete with others for them and they're a dumb expensive too, around 450 GP each. Guardians of the Rift rewards will allow me to sustain my blood runes a ton easier. The ultimate goal is to get both the runecrafting outfit and the massive pouch so I can utilize the new true blood altar. This altar is basically the original runescape's blood altar where you can craft blood runes normally. There's a new method now where you can craft 8 to 11,000 blood runes an hour with the best setup, which I will have soon. So I will show you the true blood altar method once I get these items. Also, the outfit works as Zaya too, so you can make more AFK blood runes. The outfit also stacks with the blood essence that you get from next, which I have some. So I'll show you how it all stacks for even crazy blood runes. Let's explore the Garden of the Rift minigame and showcase some sick rewards soon. Oh, I got the Lancer. Oh my god. Yes, it was worth banking. So the Lantern is a shield slot item that works only in the minigame. It has some really cool effects depending on what logs you use to light it. So the best one for me is the U-Log effect because it gives you 10% more points in your game. Now for other players that aren't max runecrafting, you probably want the Redwood one because it gives you 5% points and also your pouches do not degrade so you don't have to use NPC contact mid-game which saves you a lot of time. The main is a pivotal part of most men's looks and confidence. However, hair loss is a very common phenomenon that happens to most adults, male, by the age of 35. As a male in my 20s, it is apparent that my hair has thinned a lot over the years too. But what if it is possible to keep our hair? Luckily, hair loss prevention exists and Keeps is the premium hair prevention service. The Keeps subscription service includes connecting you with a certified doctor who will tailor and send the right prescription every three months to your doorstep. You also have 24-7 access to your Keeps doctor to address any questions and concerns. Check out some of these testimonials from Keeps customers. Hair loss stops with Keeps. To get 50% off your first order, go to keeps.com slash ricecup or click the link in the description. That's k-e-e-p-s dot com slash ricecup. Thanks for listening. Back to the progress. So I quickly found out from others that Farak armor from the diaries actually impacts your rates of getting the essence blocks, which is super good, super good here. And also the celestial ring, if you have that, it's really nice too because it gives you a plus four passive mining, which also affects how many essence you can get uh, rate wise. And the charge one is even better, but I'm not even gonna bother with the charge uh, version because that costs a lot of shards. Just the uncharged is good enough. So I won't talk too much about my early game strategies because most of them are terrible since, you know, you start getting better and better drastically. So I will give you guys some solid uh, major points of how to do this later on. Ooh, nice. I got eight points that game. Hell yeah. Okay. Even though I, I, I know I made some pretty obvious mistakes with my personal strategy, we still managed to get eight points. So that's, that, that's good. That's actually really good. That means if I get better at this, which hopefully I will, right? Today, I should be able to keep eight points or more. No. 
Whoa, 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 what is that? Oh, it's just a needle, bro. Fuck off, Jax. <laughs> so the general rewards for this minigame is pretty good. You get a ton of runes of all kinds, pretty much every uh, type, except maybe Astral. But yeah, Blood Rune is my favorite. You get a ton while doing the minigame because you make the runes, you keep it too. And you also get a bunch of runes from looting as well. So decent money if you want to sell it. And uh, Talismans too for some quests if you're an Iron Man. Now, the pearls are the main things that you want to buy the outfits and stuff. And the outfit currently costs 1350 because they nerfed it. They also made pearl rates better. I only got 300 in my first 10 hours, but that's before they changed it. So now that I'm better and they also made things a lot easier, uh, probably 400 to 500 pearls every 10 hours probably. So the outfit's probably like in the low 20 hours with my setup. Maybe 30 if you're like lower level. So the points that you get per game is going to vary a ton because of many factors. Obviously, one of them is uh, how active you are at doing it and how efficient you are. But there's some other big ones, like how many people are in the game. If there's 80 people, the game's going to end way quicker than 20 people. And you'll get way less points, no matter how hard you sweat it. Okay, so don't get too worried about like how many points you're getting. Because as long as you're following the tips I'm going to give you in, in this video, you will generally get some pretty good points. Oh, nice. 11 points once again. I'm literally milking it right now, dude. Oh, so good, man. So good. So there's some core things you got to watch out for in this main game in order to really maximize your points. The first one is looking at which altar is open, which is on the top left. Everything has a timer now in the actual mini game, so it's a lot easier time. And the other one is the yellow portal, which will also show up on the top left. They spawn about every two minutes or so. And the yellow portals is really good because when you go in there, you can go to this secret uh, spot where you can mine the dense essence blocks, except they're already chiseled for you. So you don't have to do any of the chiseling, which is really good. I highly recommend getting to those yellows as much as possible. So to run this minigame well for points and experience and just not fill the game, a big part is using the charge cells. So you can grab some uncharged battery cells on the table and you can charge it at any altar. And these cells can be used to create the golems to fight off the monsters or create a stronger shield to fend off the monsters. Ideally, you want both to be running really well in order to win the minigame. And that's a major objective, so... But essentially, the batteries have different tiers, and depending on the altar, you'll get different tiers. So the best tier of battery is from the Fire, Death, and Blood altar. So charge at those altars if possible. Highly, highly recommend it. Oftentimes, you will be able to charge at those altars at least 50 to 80% of the time. If you get really lucky, though, you can kind of back-to-back -back charge constantly and place them on the ground for some good points. But yeah, you want both the golems and the shields to be running maximum effectively. Usually the golems are taken care of though in a pretty big team, so you can just spam shields if you want, but it doesn't matter. Both are kind of similar points. So the easiest way to play this mini game and get pretty good points and XP is pretty simple. Focus on yellow portals. What I mean by that is go there as much as possible to get those uh, chiseled essence for free and make those runes out of it. And in between, charge as many overpowered cells and place it on the ground as possible. Sometimes, though, there might not be a good uh, ultra open, like the Blood, Death, Fire might not show up. So if you have extra time, just chisel some more essence. So sometimes when you're runecrafting in this minigame, you get these little free portals that will let you go into the altar no matter if it's open or not. And that's amazing, because if I get, like, this case, two fire portals, that's amazing. That's back-to-back-to-back -to -back -to -back overcharged cells for points and XP. There's two ways to start off the mini game. You can do it the lazy way, which is go to the big essence mine on the side and mine like one to 200 and craft rooms and start that way. Or you can actually grab weak energy cells on the table and place it on the ground first. I highly recommend at least placing one or two yourself. Everybody should because that way the mini game won't fail. But if nobody does it, the game will 100% fail. Fine, I'll join my boy Scott. Are you guys team north or team south or team middle or whatever, you know? I'm just gonna join my boy. I'm gonna get roasted, but it's okay. So many people are dropping their like lower tier runes that they make, but like stuff like fire runes for me is gold because that's trident charges, baby. I am banking that. Ooh, nice. I'm at 600 uh, pearls though. Halfway there at 77 games, although today's games have been so much more points like I think I've been averaging nine nine points honestly per game. 
Whereas I was averaging probably like seven or six yesterday. So huge, huge uh, step up. So yeah, almost done. Oh, what is that? A dye? Oh man. So there's a few recolors that you can use to dye your runecrafting outfit, but that's for later. Okay, let's buy the uh, the hat and the boots because everyone keeps saying to go for that. Okay, so this is going to give me some more runes. Each of these pieces are also give runes, so... Extra runes. I'll just die this because YOLO. Yay! Wait, it's more blue. Oh, it's green. Wait, what? So this E spot is really good. Because you get a lot of more essence per uh, action versus like the ones outside. 50 something? Oh, it's not even that bad. Yo, this guy needs to train his uh, agility, man. It's like 54 rec apparently or 50 something. Yeah, charge the front ones. It usually gives XP because it's always damaged a little bit. Okay, perfect. 113 out of 113. This is my biggest opening. I better, I better, better get this goddamn needle. Because we are already over the rate. We are at... 393 so i opened this as 500 that's 500 openings so oh i got it let's go let's freaking go dude i got it let's go <laughs> Let, let's see how many 400 approximately 412 or something hell yeah let's go that's gonna be insane oh my god we're gonna be getting so many more points Yahoo! let's go <laughs> Only went a little bit dry. Only went a little bit. You were tempted to combine all your essence pouches into one colossal pouch. All your essence pouches will be consumed in the process. Yeah, of course. Oh, yes. Ew, it looks so gross. Nice. We finally got it. Oh, my God. That's going to make the last half of this grind so much nicer. And also, I need this to make the optimal amount of blood roots because yeah, it holds more. Just, Jesus, spoon on pearls. Oh, whoa, whoa, abyssal blue dye? Ah, uh, whoa, that's a new collection log item. Oh, collection log. Oh, another abyssal blue dye. Oh my god. Yo. Okay, okay, okay. So apparently you can trade in the dyes. So I'm gonna uh, just get green because I already dyed my, my hat green. So, okay, that's good. I thought it was kind of too rare to have uh, to have these dyes the way it is. But luckily you can trade it for different colors. Yeah, I'll buy it. Make more runes while I'm in the minigame. And then all that's left is the top. Yes, 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 yes. There we go. Sweet. Now I can dye these. This green. Hello? Can I dye this green? Dye this green. They seem to repel liquid. Oh, actually, I... Okay, you can only dye three pieces. And I already have enough dyes now. Sweet. So, once I get the top, I can dye this and we're done. We have a, we have a completely trimmed out set. That's sick. Okay, looking forward to getting this top done. Tonight, tonight. So, there is an advanced method that people are doing right now with the runecrafting outfits at the minigame involving combo runes. So, let me explain. With the outfits, when you make the extra runes in the minigame, it doesn't impact your uh, rewards, like the, the rune stones that you use to give it to the guardian in the middle, which gives you points. You don't get extra for that with the outfit. Except if you make combo runes. With the outfit on in the minigame, when you make combo runes, you get extra stones, which means more points for the same amount of runes. Now, this is unintended, and they already addressed this, and they decided that they're not going to fix it. So that's cool. So if you want to, like really increase your points per hour you can make combo runes so anytime you go to like uh, earth altar or fire altar if you have the opposite runes you can just make combo runes for more so with the full outfit i was able to get like 90 uh, plus stones per full inventory which is huge because normally you only get like 60. so yeah that's a crazy amount of points now there's a downside to this method though you will get way too many elemental points and not many catalytic. So at some point, you do have to do catalytic focus games in order to catch up. But still, overall though, it should give you more points per hour and save you some time. I think ultimately, I should bring one game's necklace every game. Just reset, break it, even if it's not completely out. So I can spam the combo runes as much as possible. 
And bank fillers for the rune that you don't want to accidentally deposit. So in my case, earth runes. All right, well, combo room method and all that. Uh, no, I haven't filled a single game. We're getting over 60k an hour. That's actually really good. <laughs> I think their blog was 60k or something. We're looking at 64k right now. Jeez. And I'm sure people can go higher than that, you know, but... I don't need them to completely match. I think I have enough anyways. Alright, this will probably be the last gamble to get the last uh, pieces, so... What? I got another la lantern. Haha. <laughs> I also have enough pearls. Yay. 437. Oh, wow. Perfect. There's only 37 more. So that's nice. I can buy the top now. Just making sure it's the, it's the top that, I'm, that I need. Okay. It's the top that I need. Yes. It is the top that I need. There we go. Feels good, man. And perfect amount of dies for this as well. <laughs> nice. We got like the full set now. Sweet. Okay. I am going to treat myself to some blood room crafting. I know it's weird to say, but. But yeah, we're going to hit up that true blood altar and just do an hour of this and make some insane amount of blood runes, man. We get to wear the Ring of Endurance in a useful way. That's going to be awesome, man. I'm going to be running a lot of laps when I'm doing this hour blood rune crafting. And the ring will slow down my run drain, which is good. Because uh, I won't use the pool to regen my run as much. A little quality life, but hey, I have it, so I'm going to use it. Okay, menu entry swapper, item swaps. Okay, item swaps. Custom shift on bank with deposit. There you go. If I'm going to do an hour of this, I, I definitely want to just do it as smooth as possible. So. It's blocked on the... Oh, there is a shortcut here. Okay, never mind. This... Alright, so where does this go? Do I have to block it? Oh, good thing I have an axe. Sweet. So this is the level 92 shortcut. So I'm going to be using this shortcut, which is a lot faster than the one I just showed you earlier. But I guess you have to unblock it first. Ooh, where does this go? Oh, okay, okay, okay. So basically, you would fair ring and then you run south and then it sends you straight to the uh, altar. Ah, my muscle memory is definitely non-existent. This is definitely not going to be the uh, the most... The most perfect hour, but yeah, this is just going to be a, a rough idea of how many blood I can make. And we are going to use the blood essence that we got from the next grind, because why the heck not? And yeah, let's see how many uh, blood runes we make. So this is uh, going to give me even more blood runes on top of everything else. So 60% blood runes from the outfits. And uh, additional blood runes from the essence. So let's uh, let's uh, have some fun. Have some fun. Have some fun. Whoa! Look at this. Oh my god! 147 blood runes already. This is so crazy. This is so crazy. Oh wait! Oops! I forgot. I, I can do the shifting. So blood essence will also work while I do rune crafting blood runes with the outfits and each essence is a thousand blood runes. It'll take about 2000 normal essence crafted to use up uh, one of these essence if I remember it's 50% proc rate per essence. So I have 40 from next so far which is an extra 40,000. So when I'm making blood runes either Zaya method or the true blood altar method I can use this essence with me as well for more runes. We have 62,318 blood runes, so we're going to do an hour, and then, yeah, see how many blood runes we get. Well, I actually just finished an hour of blood rune crafting with the uh, the new rune crafting set and all that good stuff. And, yeah, let's find out how many blood runes I made. And uh, it was around 46k an hour. It's rumored to be 55k if you're like, you know, good at it. This is my first hour ever. So, you know, pretty solid for, for first time, I'd say. And at the end, I made 71,616, right? So, if my math is correct, I made about 9,000 blood rooms. Like 9,000. But that's what the essence though. So, I probably made like 8,000. Without the blood essence, I was probably making like, yeah, somewhere around 8k. So yeah, you can definitely make like 9k if you're really good at this. 10k even. I've heard even upwards of close to 11k. But this is good. This is about right. Uh, first time doing it and I made like... I made like 9,000 blood runes. So that's 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 insane. 9,000 blood runes an hour. Oh my god. 
But yeah, that's crazy. That's crazy, man. Rage 3, I'm ready for you, man. I, I got scales ready. I, I got blood runes ready. Yo, I have infinite blood runes, basically. So if you're wondering how the hell I had those extra pouches with me, even though I had the Colossal, it was unintended, and they patched it already. So yeah, there's only Colossal now. So blood rune crafting is actually really good money. We just did some rough math with Twitch chat, and if you have the setup that I do, not even if you're max caped or anything, you could still make like 2 mil an hour at today's prices. For a non-PVM activity, 2 mil an hour, that's crazy. And it's very consistent. So the outfit actually works for the Zaya rune crafting as well. You make 60% more runes, even with these dark essence stones. So yeah, I can still AFK here if I want. Just because honestly, there's not too many other good AFK uh, options here that could help me with PVM other than like some skilling grinds for pets or something. But I think I'd rather just stock on blood runes. But uh, yeah, I think this can be a, a few thousand an hour, like 4k an hour or something if you sweat it a bit. But I'm just going to chill so uh, we can see how much we get in an hour just chilling. Holy crap. That's crazy. Just one double inventory got me 443 blood runes with blood essence and the outfit. Yep, and the outfit. Oh, so freaking good, dude. <laughs> All right, an hour of AFK Blood Altar with the rune outfit, 2.6k. So it's 2k because um, I made 600 off of the essence. So it was 2k with just the armor in an hour. You could do this non-AFK and probably get up to 3 to 4k. But if I was going to do non-AFK blood making, I'd definitely just go to the real Blood Altar and just get 8k plus an hour, right? So this is probably the most realistic rate you're getting because you're basically here just to afk with the armor so it's about 2000 blood runes in our afk with the armor so it's really nice i'm busy all the time i need to edit all the time so at least i have this option to get that 2000 blood runes an hour versus i think it was used to be yeah it used to be like 1500 for me an hour or 1400 something like that right yo uh i just had a chill day today because i've been grabbing a bit too hard but uh this is just a really good example of uh, making blood runes afk i mean if this was without the outfit i would only get about seven thousand so getting a free five extra thousand blood runes man nice i'm back to 100k blood runes already holy shit man look at that dude this afk the crap out of the zay altar with the rope set it's so nice and also the mini game gave me a bunch back too oh we're back baby uh, never thought I'd see this stack again.